This week we're going to show you how to build a set. This is the first of a two-part series on shooting a book cover. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, we get tons of questions and we've been looking at all those and we see two that are uh, being sent in over and over. The first is, can you show us some practical lighting setups, real life lighting setups? And then the second question is, can you show us how you build your sets? And so we've seen these from all uh, a bunch of different people. And so what I decided to do is I got a recent project and it's all about shooting a book cover. And so we're going to be building a set and we're going to be lighting that and also throwing that into InDesign and Photoshop to do the final output. And so we're going to do a two part series on an actual project. The first part is this episode and it's all about how to design and build a set for a book cover. And then next week we're going to show you how we lit that set and shot it and then made sure everything was working right uh, with our designer. So let's get started first by building our set. All right, well, we're here in the studio and I've already set up a lot of my tools, probably more tools than I'm going to need. I've got my work jeans on and a t-shirt that's going to let me get all dirty. Now, let me walk you through first the plan. Normally, when I'm building a set, I plan everything out using Google SketchUp or some kind of uh, uh, a hand-drawn schematic. But this set is so simple, uh, we've done it something different, which is a mock-up. So walk over here, I'll show you what it, this is. Now, this is for a book cover, which we've already told you. Now, what we did earlier is uh, I took an existing set, this uh, French wall set right here, and I added this flat right here. I'm going to show you how to build a flat, but I just added this, and we added some lights, and we set everything up, and we did some test shoots to make sure that our set was going to work. So this is actually our plan, this really quick mock-up. Now, this took me about, I don't know, half an hour maybe to create this entire thing, light it, and do some test shoots. So this is going to be our plan. I'm going to be uh, taking some measurements off of this and applying them to our raw materials. Now our raw materials are right over here. Now one of the things you have to do is make sure you don't fall over, but one of the things that we do a lot is build flats that we can use over and over and over again. And so here's a pre-built flat right here. Now all this is is a box made of one by four. It's really flimsy as you can see. And on the other side what we have is Luon. Now Luon is this very very thin material. You can get it at most lumber stores. If they don't have it, you can substitute a really thin plywood or a thin drywall. But this is really, really thin wood that's usually used for adding veneers and stuff. And so here's a, another look at this Luan. Now Luan has splinters plenty. So when you're handling Luan, it's good to use gloves. I don't have my gloves on right now. I'll tell you why in a second. Now one by four is this wood right here. It usually comes in eight foot sections. And so the key to buying your one by four, I'll hold this right up to the camera, is to make sure it's straight. See that? Don't be scared. All right, you need to make sure it's straight. This is not a straight piece of wood, um, but as much as possible, look down the barrel of the wood and get the straightest wood possible. Now to put all this stuff together, we have some essential tools right here. Now my favorite tools, um, this is a compound miter saw. This is probably overkill. It is overkill for most set building needs, but this allows me to do all kinds of different angles and cut things really fast. This is an expensive Makita compound miter saw. You probably don't need it, but if you have one, this will save you a lot of time. There are some things you can use, though, that are more realistic. A little uh, jigsaw right here. You can get one of these very inexpensively, and you can do almost every single cut we are going to show you today. You can even use a normal hand saw just to saw stuff if you need to cut that wood. So you don't need this expensive saw, but it really helps if you build a lot of sets like we do. Now, one of the most important tools, the one we're going to be using probably the most, is this. Now this is my favorite tool. It is a uh, cordless drill, but normally I don't use it to drill. I use it to put in screws. So I've got a screw bit on the end of that. And then almost everything is held together with my drywall screws. Now, I know we're not actually using drywall, but these screws work great for holding Luon and 1x4 together. They go in really fast. And the nice thing with screws instead of nails and glue is you can take stuff apart and put it back together and reconfigure stuff. So once you're done with your set, you can just unscrew everything, and build a different set, and keep doing that over and over until finally your wood is going to wear out. And all the wood and the materials that you see here, we've had for about two years. So we've just been using this over and over and over again, and that's the great thing about it. Now another thing that I have that I use occasionally, we'll be using this today, are some uh, compressor and some air tools. So these are pneumatic tools 
for putting in nails and staples and things like that. So this will also really save you a lot of time. Totally not needed unless you're doing a lot of construction work, but that'll also save you some time. And then we've got a bunch of other tools here uh, that we'll be using maybe today, but I like to have everything ready. And so now that we have all the setup going, one more thing I have to mention, and that is make sure you wear some kind of safety materials on your eyes, some safety glasses, because the last thing you want is to have your eyes poked out by a splinter or a screw that would be really stupid. So make sure you are safe. I've taken off my wedding ring to make sure it's not snagged on anything. And the other thing that I learned earlier this year, actually last year, is do not wear gloves when you're using a table saw or power tools because the glove can be pulled into the blade and shred your hand. So when you're using those uh, saws, like we showed you earlier, take the gloves off. But when you're handling Luan, put them back on. So now that we know that, let's get started building our first flat. Building a flat is very, very simple. Most pieces of drywall or Luon or plywood come in four by eight sheets. And so basically a flat is a four foot by eight foot box that you can screw something onto like drywall, plywood, or Luon. So what we're gonna do here is we've already put one by four pieces that are eight feet long on the ground. Those are gonna be our side rails, just like this guy here. And then we're gonna put uh, two or three and sometimes four or even more of these cross pieces here. Now these cross pieces will fit right inside there. We'll screw them together. And those need to be 46 and a half inches because our uh, one by four is actually three quarters of an inch, not an inch. So when you add everything up, 46 and a half plus those two three quarter inch pieces of wood equal 48 inches. And so we'll put that all together. We'll have a box and then we'll use our drywall screws to mount our Luan onto our flat and then we're off to the races. Now one little trick of woodworking like this, we've got uh, several 46 and a half inch pieces to cut. So instead of remeasuring those all the time, then I'm gonna take this board that I've already measured, I'm gonna put a big P on there. That means it's the pattern and I'll measure all the rest of them from the same board. Now it's very important if you have a pattern like this that you measure from the pattern every time because if you measure from the pattern and then do a new board, then measure from that board and then measure from the next one, your uh, the, the dimensions are gonna start getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So always make sure that you measure from your pattern. So I'll put this on here. This is my pattern. That is nice and flush there. Put this against that. I'll make my mark. And now I have my next cut ready to go. I will line it up with my laser on my saw there. Safety glasses on, hands out of the way. Whammo! Now I've got two pieces and they match exactly. So that's what I want. All right, now just to help me get everything uh, squared up, I'm using an actual square and putting that on the corners here to make sure my wood aligns. Now, since this is cut, uh, so it will be a square. It's not super important, but when I get to this middle piece right here, this is gonna be pretty important to make sure that this piece is actually straight. So let me put the last corner together here, and then we'll put that last piece in and we'll be done with our frame. All right, here is our finished frame, and you can see it's four by eight feet. Now, this is definitely wobbly. See how that wobbles back and forth? That's okay, it's a set, and this has to last us for about, I don't know, four hours, something like that. And when we put the Luan on the front of this, that's gonna fix this little wobble. Now, getting this to stand up straight requires us to build something else called a jack. So let's first put the Luan on the front of this, and then I'll show you how to build a jack, which will take about 20 seconds. I'm just gonna yank out this piece of Luan very noisy and you can see that on the front of this it's got some black paint because we used that for another set in the past I really like this black paint we use it a lot so what I'm going to do is just use the back side so I'll let that fall down there powie just like that I'll line it up on this frame I'll screw it down and our flat will be done all right, now one little trick of putting Luan or anything on a flimsy frame like this, that frame is not exactly square. And so what you wanna do is you wanna tack down one corner and then go to the opposite side, square that up, tack that down, and then you can work your way around with these screws. But if you put everything in on the bottom, when you get to the other side, you'll find that things don't line up. So I'll start here, go to the opposite side, and then work my way around. All right, the next thing we need to do is stand this wall up. 
And we do that by building something called a jack, which is made out of just a couple pieces of wood. Now what I'm gonna do here is Michael is helping me out and we need to make sure this is level. So we've got this long level here, we can hold it up. And so Michael, come on over here on this side. So Michael's gonna come over here and hold that and then get that to be level. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take this long piece. I'm gonna go right where your hands are. So maybe come around on the other side. There you go. Right where your hands are. There you go. And I'm gonna put this on here about like that. So that's what I need to do. So let me first tack that in really quickly with my piece of screw. Now having somebody to help you out here is invaluable, as you can see. And so I'll put this up here. We've got that, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be level yet. Just gonna tack this in really quickly. Now getting it into my glove. Need to make sure it's behind that. Here we go. Just gonna put one screw in. Just like that. Then the next thing I need to do is put in this bottom screw here. And this is going to hold up my uh, piece. So first I'll tack it in down there. Just to one screw really quickly. So put it in there. Bam, that's there. Now we need to get this level. So is it level? Doesn't have to be exact, but just close. Mm -hmm. It's good? Okay, then I'll tack in the third screw. Just like that. And we have that. You can let go now. Now, Michael, if you'll hold me that um, sandbag there. Now to stand this up, we'll throw a sandbag in there. Just like that, kick it down here. And we have our wall all held up. Now again, it's wobbly, but we don't care. We're not gonna lean against it or anything like that. But that is how you build a jack. Now that we have that up there, I'll put a couple more screws just to make it more secure. If you need your wall not to be wobbly like this, we'll just add a jack to both sides and it'll be rock solid. All right, now this uh, right here was already framed out uh, previously, but I just did a really rough framing of a window that's gonna go in here. And it's not actually a real window. It is actually a window. It's right over here, actually, I'll show it to you. This window right here, actually it came off of a cabinet and so this is for like a bookshelf or something it's not a real outdoor window so what i'm going to do is i'm going to play some tricks and sort of mount this inside of the uh, flat that i just built and we're going to use some of this existing framing here to build a frame around it to make it look like it's an actual window like you would see in a wall so the first thing i need to do is get that wall up there get the angle set join those together and then we'll start working on this window next so what i've done here is i've made some measurements and we're going to cut this out of both of these uh, crossbars here. And so what will happen is this window will then sit flush against this. And then I can put the framing around it. And it'll look like only the top part of the window is showing. And we can hide this bottom part inside the wall itself. So let me cut that out and you'll see exactly how this works. All right, we're almost done with building the, uh, the flats and getting everything framed out. So I wanna show you really quickly what I did here with this window. So I showed you earlier that I uh, set this back inside the wall. If you walk around on the other side here, we can see that what I've done is, you can see I cut out this span right here so this can sit inside the wall. That way we're concealing this bottom panel so it's not gonna show up. And then I added two more cross beams here and I'll show you why on the other side. So come on over here. What we're gonna do last is add this little last piece of Luon. Now you're asking me, why do you have all these mismatched pieces of Luon? Well, we're using scrap, so we don't have to buy anything new and it saves us some dollars. So this guy here is just gonna go right up here on top like that. And what I'll do to make sure that stays up there, I'll just clamp it on there with my little wood clamp. That'll hold that on there until I get it all screwed in. Now, the next thing that I need to do is make this look a lot nicer because it looks pretty nasty right now. So we're gonna cover all this, this whole thing in some wallpaper. And uh, the reason for that is obviously to make it look better, but then to cover all these blemishes. And once that's up, then we're gonna take some pieces I've cut here and we're gonna put that around the window and that'll frame that up and make it look like it's an actual window that should be used inside a house. Then we'll add some props, some chairs, a carpet, a bunch of other stuff. And this is gonna look like a finished set.
Okay, well our set is finished. We have everything done except we need to dress this. We need to add curtains and chairs and furniture and lights and all kinds of stuff or else this is going to look really bland. So that's what we're going to do next. Once that's finished, then we're going to go to the next episode next week. We're going to show you how to add all the lights. We're going to put the model here and then we're going to shoot everything tethered so that we make sure that our book cover looks perfect. So let's dress this and then we'll see you again next week. Well, now that our set is all built out, the next thing we're going to do in next week's episode is light that set. We're going to put a model on this set. We're going to shoot tethered and we're going to make sure everything works in our final book design. And so make sure you tune in next week to see how we do all of that stuff. Well, thanks again for joining me this week. Remember, if you have a question about photography, you can send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. All right, well, we're here in the studio. We've got all my tools set up here. I've got my sloppy jeans. Sloppy jeans? What are they called? Or jeans. Or jeans. That's better. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.